Hello, hello, and welcome to the Golden City Podcast, the brand new college podcast based out of Iowa City, Iowa, home of the Iowa Hawkeyes. There's always exciting stuff going on in this town, but we're a little more interested in the people who inhabit it, their experiences, knowledge, their likes, their dislikes, and opinions. Everybody here has a story to tell, and I would like to hear it. So thank you for listening and joining Skylar and I on this journey. Let's get to it. Well, welcome back to the Daily Double. We got a little bit of news here, but uh, we're going to keep it short because we have a good episode coming up for you. I'm pretty psyched about it. Um... Let's start with Molly Tibbetts is back in the news. Skylar, could you tell us what's going on with that? Yeah, I don't know too much about it, um, but it sounds like some stuff is resurfacing. Stuff was trending on Twitter a few days ago. Uh, about her trial? Yeah, about a trial, about comments made by Elizabeth Warren uh, back last year when she was murdered. Uh, what yeah. were the comments? She, Elizabeth Warren basically said that she's so sorry for the family, but we need to focus on where the real problems are in the immigration system, such as family, such as child separation policy at the border, which doesn't make any sense because you can't get more separated than what Molly is separated right now. Yeah, she's dead. So like, (laughs) I mean, yeah, to put it in like simple terms, I guess, yeah. I don't know. I think it's super interesting just for the sole fact that, you know, it's election season and everybody's kind of picking sides, which is crazy. But um, I think this next year is going to be wild with all the election stuff. Yeah. Especially Trump, Trump gets reelected. You think there's going to be riots? I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. I haven't I think been there. On... Are, dude, I, 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 want to, I just want to see what happens. So I want him to win. I'd, <laughs> I'd like to be on this campus. Yeah, it's different. So, like, I come from a conservative, like, community where, yeah. you know, Trump won and it was like, yeah, it was great. But. Here, there's been a Bernie Sanders rally. Um, I've seen a lot of Elizabeth Warren signs out and about, especially just from hearsay and everything like that. But, um, you know, now that this is kind of like resurfacing in the news, I wonder if a lot of people have actually like looked into it. Because, I mean, it the main articles are from about a year ago when Ele- <clears throat> when Warren initially made a lot of these comments. But um, I, don't, I don't wonder if just people know. Yeah, that, I don't know too much, about it, too much about it. You guys want to learn more about the case? I guess you can look it up. Well, it looks like what happened was is the trial for the uh, illegal immigrant who killed Molly Tibbetts. Oh, is, that's uh, coming up here. Yes. Well, the the guy's lawyer uh, requested another another trial delay for the uh, for the trial, and because it, of that, it's back in the news, and so Request. people are pulling out Elizabeth Warren's old comments. You can request trial dates to be moved back I, I you can guess. you can like it's kind of like filing an appeal you just be like hey can we get this moved back type of thing i guess that's from what my understanding is well, I'm, like, I'm surprised they let you do that though because like you're not ready it sucks for you is uh but here's the thing though that's that's kind of on the defense the it's a kind of against the defendant they try to make it as um you know good and on equal. both sides yeah yeah I guess if you're listening to this and you don't know who Molly Tibbetts is, uh, a year ago, she was a 20-year-old University of Iowa student who was murdered and found in a cornfield, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, when I initially saw this, I think it resurfaced on Twitter. I saw a couple tweets about it. But um, in another video I watched, the the uh, the alleged killer um, was an illegal immigrant, but from what it sounds like it's kind of a messed up story. So from what he was telling investigators was that he was like walking, he followed her and then he blacked out. So he said when he gets in times of like severe stress or something like that, he just blacks out. Doesn't remember it. What? Like he just went on autopilot. Yeah, pretty much. So he didn't notice that, he like blacked out for a period of time, but he finally noticed something was wrong when he was driving away and found a set of earbuds in his car or something of the sort. So he found something, and he's like, then he realized, 
that she was in the trunk of his car. So is he going for like an insane? I think plea? that I think that's their angle. Is that he's criminally insane? I think that's probably their angle because he said he like blacked out during this entire time. So I think they're trying to say like he can't be held liable for something. You know, he doesn't like extreme situations. But I don't know how well that's gonna fly. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm sure there will be more updates on that in yeah, the future. We'll yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, other uh, short little update I got is about the Cyhawk football incident with the band that we've talked about every single time so far. <laughs> What's going really on not now? that much new stuff, I don't think. I am I couldn't really find anything more about this, but apparently Tim Van... Tim Van Lu is the director of the ISU facilities and wrote to our band director at Iowa saying, I want to apologize for being completely out of character. Uh, the man you saw is not who I am, nor is it the way I want to represent ISU. So I don't know what he did. I don't know if he like got charged with something or what. But Wait, this guy, well, who was this guy? This is like a... The guy who apologized is director of ISU facilities and grounds. So is he apologizing on, on behalf of someone? Uh, he said no. He said the man you saw is not who I am. He's apologizing for himself. So Maybe he made he some like, comments. So I don't know stuff. if he made some comments or like was mad at the band when they were going out the wrong exit or something. But huh. yeah, all those little police criminal reports that some of the band members filed are still going on. So. Weird. That's all I got on that. A yeah. couple other things uh, in the local news. We have a Taylor, you'll like this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a uh, oh, where's the uh, University of Iowa condemns racist comment from sorority member. Ooh. All right, let's get let's get it down. <laughs> what sorority? <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's like, do I know her? Taylor's got a very tight relationship with uh, many sororities on campus. Not I, it's Kappa Kappa Gamma. I don't oh, know. I yeah, I, I, feel like I know. I know every, a couple people in Kappa I, Kappa Gamma. Of course you do. How does every sorority have the word <laughs> Kappa in it, dude? I swear. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm not sure. So this it's is what happened. It's luck of the draw. That's not true, but I, I just feel like every luck time I hear it, it's like, oh, Kappa Kappa. So just, it says they just don't pick a Greek letter. It says they don't disclose. They didn't disclose the details, but they basically said what happened. Um. Uh, Screenshots of the images circulated on social media show a group of girls dressed in white and comment, join the KKK, and then a follow-up comment that says, I mean, join the KKG. Oh, my gosh. Was it on herp? Was <laughs> it, okay, what, it. were they playing, being, like, clever with the wordplay? They were trying to be clever, I'm assuming, and they... Just got How for fucking it. stupid do you That's, have to I mean, be? The KKK is no <laughs> joke. I mean, That's just common it's, sense. It's I don't. Really, I really don't I have any I would be sympathies. laughing if it wasn't a sorority girl that did it. That's what makes it funny. <laughs> There's got to be other like clever Instagram captions and referencing yeah, the KKK. The girl tried to say, I never meant it in an offensive way or n- ever meant it to be screenshotted. No oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was on Instagram? <laughs> Yeah, she. It was a comment. I didn't mean it, it to like be her, offensive. Her description. Ah, uh, well. Picture. You can edit that crap. Well, like, well, she was trying to do it as a joke. I feel like. Yeah, but I think someone people were screenshotting it. Yeah, so like, then it's full send. It's out. You yeah. know. Yep, yeah, mom and dad are real proud. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> Melissa Shivers, University of Ooh. Iowa Vice President for Student Life. Yeah, she's not too happy about it. She's not too happy about anything. <laughs> That's why, like, seventy five percent of our fraternities are uh, on like probation and suspended, and can't do anything other than like the regular ordeals. I really like this line. We are writing to emphasize the comment made by this individual was unacceptable, and the Pan Hellenic community does not stand for this. It's like what? Well, what the is Pan Hellenic community? A thing. It's a thing. Why do they call it that? That makes know. it sound I like I don't know why. It's like supposed to be like a, the group. Of... It's 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 like the technical term for the Greek world. Yeah, it's like the, well, it's like the Congress of. Yeah, but they have like there's an actual like group that like, oh, yeah. leaders from all the different. I just think it's funny how they put like a fancy sounding term on it. It's like it's literally just <laughs> frats and sororities. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, you got you guys have like the Greek life experience. 
I'm not really 100 percent sure. I'm about yeah, all but, that. We don't, we don't, I do. We don't have well, well, I mean, you guys. No, don't we're like, we're in professional fraternities. Those are not even. You in still the knew same. what the word panhellenic meant, or whatever the fuck that meant. <laughs> Dude, panhellenic <laughs> refers to literally like you know Alexander the Great, mm-hmm. and he created you know the his empire. Yep. That was called the panhellenic, like empire. People, were, <laughs> all the Greek city states in history when they were conquered by. Alexander the Great, that was called like Panhellenic. So that's why they use that term. I'm an exercise science major. I, haven't, I, haven't, <laughs> I still haven't fulfilled my history gen ed yet. So. Yeah. No, Skyler's in an engineering fraternity. I'm in a business fraternity. It's not even in the same realm. No, we, we, yeah, we don't party weekly. Yes. We don't officially party. Quite. We don't have a house. We don't officially party together. Yeah. Oh, really? But we just take professional trips and, uh, Never mind. We're not even gonna go there. All right. What's your other news article? Yeah. One, one more, more thing. Um. So this story is back in the news again. Um. If you remember, I think it was a year ago. Uh. A judge. Or so th- there was a Christian group on campus that was called like Business Leaders for Christ. Business Leaders in Christ who sued the school or sued certain individuals for like, uh, free, freedom of speech purposes. Well, yeah, well they uh. The article I read about it like a couple weeks ago was they like purposely rejected funding and wouldn't allow right. them to use the university spaces. Right. For the reason that this Christian business group would not allow any student who is in a gay or lesbian or transgender relationship to be in a leadership position. And so the university was sort of denying them certain things because of that and so they sued um that was a year ago and now it's back this article uh says judge again finds iowa violated christian groups rights so i remember that was kind of uh that got a lot of attention when that first happened so i wonder what will happen with this i think it sounded with the article i read sounded like those guys were getting they were paying out of pocket yeah so this says like they're personally being sued, but like they're they're gonna lose. <laughs> what yep. That's what I'm saying. There was one part that says that they were there were certain individuals who were gonna be personally held liable. Yep. Yep. Where did I see that? I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I uh, think yeah, basically they're suing individual professors. It looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, how do how do they sue individual professors? Because don't the like the prof the professors represent the university? Yeah, yeah. I'm I guess not exactly all the details sure. on how they they personally had a role in doing that, but I guess like there are like oh, what you want to call them, mentors to each student group on campus. And so oh, maybe I got it wrong. It says, but this decision goes further. It finds that Iowa administrators could be held personally liable for damages because they should have known better than to treat the second group that way after the ruling in the earlier case. So is this, it is happened this, again. Is this the same Christian group, or I is it a different so. one? So I, I heard the one I read mentioned the, I think it's called Crew or something like that. So it was a different Christian group. Yeah, it's like cr- Christian Fellowship something. They're, and, they're all over like the United States. They have a bunch of different. Okay. I know, trying, I know, yeah. I know Crew, yeah. And now yeah. there's a new group, new Christian group, that is now suing again. I think it's Crew. Well, no, this one is business leaders in Oh, Christ. that's this year again? Yeah. So, oh, okay, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. I read that part of yeah. it. I just remember it mentioned that. I don't know. Anyway. Interesting times. That's about all that's uh, happening. By... Yeah. yeah. That's all uh, That's all we really got for now. Um, we're going to go ahead and roll into the episode. Uh, it's going to be a good one, so stay tuned. <laughs> Coming up next, I'm really psyched to have on one of my best friends, Matt Aller. Matt is one of a kind, and the man needs no introduction. I think you're really going to enjoy our talk, so without further ado, I give you Matt. I'm glad we finally got you down here. Yes. To be on the mm-hmm. uh, on the podcast. You were one of the first people I had in mind when I was thinking about, well, who could we get on right why, away? Why to is talk that? To? Dude, because... Everybody knows you got a million things going on in your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Matt, Matt's like you're, you're one of he's a like kind. The funny, funny, and it also has like intelligent, like 
insights into things. And then it also has just like hilarious stories that you'd be like, oh my gosh, why, why would you ever do that? Why would a human being consume? <laughs> um, yeah. That? Why, why, like, what, what went through your head when you decided I'm to do that? I'm deviously intelligent. I'm, I like the thing of myself. Well, Maybe that's a little cocky, but. <laughs> Sky, so this morning, right? ROTC, we're out there doing what's what we call the Hawk Strike Challenge. It's uh, basically this thing where you get a map with some coordinates and you have to go find this spot. And there's like some objects there, like water cans and a log, maybe. You pick them up and your platoon has to carry it to a new location, right? And normally we do this at Camp Dodge in the field, but this morning we did it in Iowa City, right? So it's probably like 545 in the morning. And my platoon, so I'm the platoon six leader. Six o'clock, bud. Union work doesn't start it was, till six. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. It was six o'clock because it was near the end, right? So we started at South Quad on the west side. Yeah. We ran over to the IMU. We were at the Pentacrest, back to the IMU, and we're running past, uh, you know, that that trail that goes behind Hillcrest, yep. and then by the Art by Peterson, yep. and where the pharmacy build the new pharmacy building construction site is. Yep. So. My pl- I'm like barking orders at my platoon, you know, giving them encouragement. And uh, Master Sergeant Janice, okay, this this Master Sergeant makes me a casualty, which basically means that I'm no longer allowed to be in charge. I'm just dead, and someone has to carry me. Oh. So Taylor picks me up, and we're running by the pharmacy construction building where Matt works. And sure as shit, we hear... Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think I said, "Go get them, boys!" <laughs> Six in the morning. I look over and I'm like, "Is that Matt? Oh what's up, word. dude? <laughs> Did you say that then? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, like all our cadre were looking at me like, "Who the hell are you talking to? Matt's up there doing something. He's got his hard our... hat on. Yeah. He's like the only one. You can barely see him." He's got his work clothes on. And... It totally describes Matt though. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was gonna say like. The the little Snapchat memories. One came up the other, like probably a month ago or two months ago, whatever it was, of our first year here, and we're at we're waiting for like a CAN bus, and they got those newspapers. Oh Matt's, my god! That <laughs> sets one of them on fire, just, just throws it on the grass, and then just runs away. And I'm just like, no, what? It is just like running away, and there's a fire burning in the middle of the ground over there. And I'm just like, dude, there's endless. <laughs> Matt stories. What, what do you what do you call that thing that like whispers in my ear sometimes? The good idea fairy, <laughs> yeah. or it's actually more like the bad idea fairy. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, Matt's the type of person that will look at an object and think to himself, "What's the dumbest thing yeah, that I'm I rather, could do?" I'm rather with impulsive this about right now, <laughs> and he doesn't. Sometimes he consults everyone. Sometimes he just does it. <laughs> and uh, well, if I know that it's a good bad idea. I have to follow through. But if I think it's like a shitty good bad idea, I <laughs> got to get like, it like a group consensus. So do you have like a like a measure or measure of what makes it a shitty good a shitty bad idea or a good bad idea? I don't know. I guess I just like shock so value like, like and things. Che- like a checklist in your mind like is anyone going to die? No, okay. That's all okay, right. Yeah, I and do. Then... I think I I have some like preliminary safety concerns. <laughs> you know, like what's the worst thing that can happen? Sometimes I don't think through, think through things at all. Like, uh, oh really? That paper, that, <laughs> that fire in the middle of the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, like the grass. No, I, I just on fire. I just did it. Or I, your ability to entertain yourself is is unmatched. Uh, I guess I can agree. Hundred percent. I'm um, I'm easily entertained. So, for those that don't know, me and Matt uh, and Skyler, we all originally met because we lived together on the twelfth floor in Slater Hall. Infamous. The, the infamous 12th floor <laughs> lots for, of stories about that for many reasons i was listening um, to the the previous episode and uh you guys talking oh, about the cops yeah we told a few stories those <laughs> yeah may or may not have been my Dude, fault on Matt, that. We, had, <laughs> they talked, we had all all of 12th floor like our whole gang all on the podcast at once and we just told stories oh, that podcast would be three hours long yeah. and it would just be a bunch of yelling of everyone laughing You'd and have talking to have, over each other you have people to, like, listening would probably just turn it off they'd be like i would turn it off like i'd this? listen to the first couple and be like okay this is funny and then they'd be like okay this is dumb you guys are all just dumb yeah we did right? a lot of dumb shit <laughs> particularly me like i would you you and hunter were probably like my favorite combination because like, yeah you and 
it's you are in a hunter's relationship was very is very similar to what taylor and hunter's relationship is now yeah like like yeah i'll wrestle you taylor like yeah. let's go oh <laughs> Well, that's what happens when you have like eight wrestlers on the floor. Yeah. There's just constant wrestling. Oh, Hunter, 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 doesn't, everywhere. Hunter doesn't wrestle though. <laughs> yeah, but he's not. He ain't no bitch. So yeah. <laughs> he may be deaf, but he ain't like, no bitch. You guys like <laughs> tack, like chase each other down the hallway with like shaving cream on your hands, and we're oh, like, my oh God. my word. I uh, but, uh, Taylor I, was my yeah. temporary Logan. My Logan wasn't here because I would just your continue. punching bag. Oh yeah, no, I had to fuck with Taylor. Bag. But well, we won't get into the stories. I'll, I'll keep going if we keep going. Like yeah, no, yeah, we're going to lose half that. our listeners um, and probably get in trouble with the university. Yeah. I <laughs> wasn't not an admission when, I, of when I told that when I was talking about the cops on our floor, I didn't want to indict you, you know, so I kind of just left it open well, to interpretation. <laughs> but that was yeah, de- Matt was definitely that involved was part of a couple of those. Yeah, a couple of those. At least. two of those for sure. <laughs> two of those I can say I definitely had a part. In uh, something, I'm not, not going to say it on the air, but you guys all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> for, for the best, the best prank of all time. That was a counter. That was a counter prank. I didn't. It wasn't right. even a well, prank. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Still, I digress. Funny, one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever heard someone do. Does he? Does he know that it was you to nope. this day? No one knows, but you, those who know, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, let's not get into that. Yeah, um, let, let's cut that one. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, what oh. I remember about the 12th floor, I came in to the school year halfway through. So I did not have a fall semester of my yeah. freshman year. And when I got onto this floor, you guys had all already you guys had already sort of made friends with each other. Yeah, we're all pretty tight at that point. And I was sort of the new guy on the block. You were the catalyst though for like the shenanigans that we did, you know, like I don't think <laughs> the catalyst. Dude. Yeah, I, a, I don't know if I would say that, but I remember I got to my, you know, my room and got settled in and I didn't know anybody. And it was it was you who really brought me into the group uh, first, I think, um, especially that first night mm-hmm. we went out. I recall. Yeah. And so um that was that was I at the time I thought that was really cool. So oh, I bet I, you were the first person. Cheers. You and Mitch were the first first yeah. people to come to my room too. I've always been. I'm not really afraid, I guess, of uh, socializing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I may be a sociopath, but <laughs> it's not entertaining if <laughs> I don't see, have anyone to be shocked by what I do. Where everybody was like, "Oh, who's this fucking new guy on the block?" Yeah. Matt was didn't you didn't think like that? You were uh, dude. I don't. I you were open. Tell you what with me. I don't so. remember you moving in at all. Really? I remember like getting a new neighbor, but I didn't like talk to our old neighbors ever. Um, and then when you moved in, I was just like another new neighbor. But then I think you came friends with everyone else, and I was just yeah. Kind of I kind of just ended up in your room sometimes. So then like all of a sudden we just all hanged out, and then it was just whatever. Like, yeah, that's what I I really that freshman year was just some of the best memories i've ever had like i did some of the stupidest shit i've ever done or thought of it was but... always funny though yeah <laughs> it was always it was, funny we were that always the time, having a good the time. time there was never that, a time yeah. where i was like oh dude this is just ridiculous no i was laughing so though. yeah it was always worth it like <laughs> <laughs> i like how you described it as a barracks it is like it was episode. like a barracks yeah, yeah, was it was a was barracks weird. with a couple that, of uh girls that yeah. sort of had to deal with that us. same sort of culture i guess just the ridiculous shit of who can make who laugh or what's mm-hmm. what's entertaining at the moment yeah that lounge mm-hmm. that poor lounge oh yeah we uh, <laughs> defiled that place. the amount of penises created in <laughs> paper form marker form Man, i still have videos of you throwing things out the window <laughs> of the yeah, 12th floor you and mitch would just be like Oh, finish the beer bottle. <laughs> Goodbye. Chuck it out the window. Dude, you think if I Here. dropped a Tide Pod all the way down, it would break? <laughs> yeah, no, that's... Yeah. That's how it always starts, with a question. Well, you missed... Do you think that uh, this would happen? Yeah. Were you, weren't you at some sort... When we initially got to Peterson, weren't you gone for like the first two weeks? After I uh, returned? No, you were there when I got back. No, I, w- I missed one week, I think. I think that week you were gone. That's because when... me and you came back at the same time, Yeah, remember? yeah. So, but me, Mitch, and both of our girlfriends, we were fucking around in that stairwell there, and I told you that that story of how uh, Trevor sent me a a dildo in the mail. A basic, oh yeah, I remember. And I the had dildo. to bring it home, like I wasn't allowed to dispose of it. Uh huh. But anyways, we decided to drop it down from 
was it uh, 10 well, stories, yeah. technically 11 with the basement, all the way down, and it landed perfectly, suction cup. It's stuck. Just, no yeah. way. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> Did it, like, flip in the air? Or did oh, it was tumbling the Did whole you time. Ever, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever see that dildo? I that thing was the most of graphic it. looking <laughs> dildo. It was Mitchell, lifelike. I don't, I don't feel the need to see <laughs> Mitchell it. might still have it. Um, next, after next door. <laughs> after first first semester, Mitchell gave me a statue that said "best roommate." And my last semester, after I, before I dropped out, I took the little statue guy off and super glued the dildo onto the <laughs> placard that says "best roommate." I remember when you did that. I had though. googly eyes on him, and <laughs> well, let's back up a little bit. Yeah. So you started out. Um, in uh, freshman year in Air Force yes. ROTC, uh-huh. why? Well, um, I guess I can kind of credit my dad to that. I always wanted to join the military in some sort of aspect, but my dad really pushed for me to join the Air Force because I think, like any concerned father, he was afraid of me going into combat mm-hmm. and you know dying. He doesn't, he didn't want to bury his son, which I understand. Sure, but um. Well, you really screwed the pooch on that. Oh, one. yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in my time in Air Force ROTC, I had a good time, I guess. We, there was some interesting people, some really smart people. Oh, yeah. But uh, I wasn't getting out of it what I expected to. Mm-hmm. I guess from the whole wrestling aspect, I've always been more of a get-in-the-dirt type of guy. And, and whereas yeah. the Air Force is kind of more of a... Yeah nerdy intellectual yes like a ch- it's like playing chess versus being on the wrestling team you know uh-huh. like they both have their their perks and their drawbacks right. so then when i came onto the floor in the spring that's when you made the transfer to army yeah uh again i gotta credit uh trevor for that he really would be my initial recruiter yeah telling me about well we talked about that with taylor yeah. on the yeah on him the last well, episode. me and taylor went through that whole transition together you know like yep. we both talked to each other and yep this is what we're gonna do yeah so mm-hmm. that happened yeah why why did why 11 bravo why infantry uh i guess i have a mix of reasons one uh i always wanted to do some sort of combat mos again contradicting what my father wanted me to do Mm -hmm. which is uh i guess kind of difficult for me because him and i have always had a really close relationship Uh but after knowing all the things that i had previously known about the military and how the stories i've heard from other service members i met throughout my childhood i guess felt like you were a better fit yeah that's how my personality is that's the things that i'm interested in and the whole brotherhood aspect in the infantry is, I think anyone can agree that it is uncomparable to any other MOS in the service. Mm-hmm. Just because of the ridiculous amount of bullshit you have to go through and some of the situations you can find yourself in. And so that attracted you. Yes. And then the other uh, reason would be uh, the same reason for Taylor is that it was the fastest MOS at the time. Right. It was so, only 14 weeks. Yeah, so I could do it. Between my summer, between college, mm-hmm. which uh, I guess, yeah, I came a, a week late, which mm-hmm. wasn't that bad, but it really opened my eye in a sense. I've always, uh, I, I think I've, I have a different world perspective than most people yeah. through, I guess, the experiences I've had growing up. Yeah. And uh, joining the infantry really... Um, amplified those opinions of mine they've always been there but not as strong Uh uh-huh no i know what you're saying yeah so once i got back to college and started to get back into the classwork i was really i guess exhausted of i was just about to say like let's fast forward to sophomore year Mm -hmm. you started to lose interest in you yeah college i have i was taking a liberal arts major on entrepreneurial leadership because i had no freaking clue what i wanted to do other than i Mm -hmm. I thought I should go to college because that's what my both my parents told me. They wanted me to have a better life than they did. Yeah. But I couldn't find anything that I guess I could get involved into or really absorbed into. Yeah, I remember like relating to you for sure because when I uh, came home from basic training, remember I was still in high school. So I came back to my senior year and – you know, I'm sure you agree. Basic training kind of makes you feel like you've aged quite a bit. Oh no, the maturity. Like I'm still immature mm-hmm. and, like I say, uh, chaotic. 
but um you it, it developed me as a uh-huh. person for, for sure. sure yeah so when i came back to my senior year you know i just came from a world of you know like i became a soldier i can't imagine a that soldier's transition. world and, yeah. and you know and you go from that to back to high school where there's high schoolers and drama and everything that goes with high school and it kind of I lost interest in my grades and in my classes for sure. And so when I saw you kind of going through that, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's how it goes for some people. Mm -hmm. And Taylor felt that way too. Yeah. So walk me through then. So you're starting to lose interest in classes. Yes. And kind of just, you. I see, it seemed like you were sort of disenfranchised with the idea of just higher education as a whole. Yeah. Um, I really struggled because because of my major it was a liberal arts degree. I had to go through uh, all the rounding classes, you know, to make you a well-rounded person. Sure. And I was taking like, um, God damn it. It was like German economics, learning about like what's going on in Germany right now and how uh-huh. their, their economical impact on the United States. It's really cool, I guess, but I couldn't get interested in it. I'm more of a hands-on uh the, a kinesthetic learner definitely i and um the way that we were doing things in all those types of classes that didn't apply to my major you know it was hard for me to to care about it mm-hmm. because i didn't see how it would be applicable further exactly. down the road but that's also because i didn't see an end point for myself i didn't i didn't have a goal or what knew what i wanted to do with my major so you were constantly asking yeah. yourself what's this all for mm-hmm and um, my father is an electrician, and so is my older brother. Uh, so I've grown around the electrical trade my entire life. I had a, a rudimentary understanding of what it entailed, and I knew that it was hands-on, that it was an intellectual trade. It wasn't. I was not like I was a drywall, becoming a drywaller uh-huh. or a painter. You know, hanging so, rock. So it really appealed yeah. to you while you're sitting here taking these boring classes. Yes getting a degree that you're not even sure you want. Yes. And then here you have your dad and your brother Mm -hmm. who are doing the job that you think you would enjoy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately you pulled the trigger. I did. And I, I, ever since I've done it, I have been 10 times happier than I was that first semester of sophomore year. I remember when, like, that was a big decision for you. Oh, I I uh, struggled. I went back and forth from it so many times. I was terrified about it. Yeah. And um, it really got to me. I remember when you did that, like, I had mixed emotions about it because you were obviously one of my best friends in school, and you leaving meant you weren't going to be around as much, which Mm -hmm. sucked, but I knew that you had made the right choice. Like, Mm -hmm. I felt like that that you would belong better in the trades than you mm-hmm. would here. And uh, so I was I was, I was, was happy for you. Uh, I definitely, I guess what really hits it home for me is that basic training, I hated it and I loved it all at the same time. You get that gratification, especially if you excel as a soldier at basic training and drill sergeants see that. Mm-hmm. At least in my experience, they praise you in a way that uh, – didn't build, like boost your ego, you know, but made you feel pr- pride. Yeah, that's that biggest thing is pride. Uh huh. And in the trade, I get that same sort of gratification. You get to I, see yeah. the finished product like, of your um, labor. The pharmacy building, I have gotten to help um, terminate this sort of this lighting control system called the Watt Stopper. So it'll like uh, it's like a time system that'll turn lights and. Uh, outlets on and off so yep. like at night where they're saving power saving energy saving cost all yeah. whatever but i've gotten to help with over 60 percent of that in the building and being the guy that gets to flip on the breaker walk over and turn the light switch and see the lights turn on i don't even know that's that's got to be what it's like to write like an outstanding song and know that's what uh-huh. it was like you know that sort of pride and gratification that all this time and effort running the pipe pulling the wire terminating the system. You systems. get to see everything yeah, that goes into it. Is it is astounding. And not only that, at least at the time, the journeyman I was working with, um, Shane, phenomenal guy. Him and I had an outstanding time. It would be like working with my dad. You know? Really? Just really, really good conversation. Get a lot of work done. And it, it honestly felt like we were slacking off. I remember when you were... So you started out uh, as a helper at the pharmacy yes. construction site because uh-huh. your brother was working there. Yep. And 
I remember you initially telling me how much you loved it there. Mm -hmm. And that kind of made me wonder how many people like you are out there Mm -hmm. that are wasting their time in universities. Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, I honestly think that if I would have, if like the trades would have came to my high school and gave me a little sort of synopsis of what it was all about and what it entailed a little bit more and like the benefits (laughs) that I just get for being my job. Oh, yeah. This is unskilled labor. As a first year apprentice, I make roughly sixteen dollars an hour. I get uh, the NECA, the National. I mean, I might be wrong. Uh, the National Contractors Association. Essentially, I don't really remember the acronym. They pay a a pension for me, uh-huh. so I get you know like a four hundred one k essentially. Right. And they'll match whatever I put into it. The IBEW, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, which is the the group, I guess, that I'm a part of, the union, mm-hmm. they pay a local pension. So the local 405 gives me a pension, and the International Brotherhood also gives me a pension. So right there, three pensions. As a first year. As, yeah, starting to accumulate yep. this retirement fund. I don't think people realize how much yeah. money is in the and trades in 30 right now. years, how much that is going to accumulate. And I immediately have health care. You know, yep. if I break my leg tonight, I can go and get it paid for and not have to worry about it. Yeah, dude. I have a buddy back home who was in my old reserve company who he was planning on going to college, doing ROTC just like me. But he uh, got a summer job working as a plumber and he fell in love with it. And now he's killing it. Like he's going to become a journeyman in a couple of years and he's mm-hmm. going to be making a hell of a lot more money. He already makes <laughs> way more money than me. That's the thing is $16 an hour is 45% of what I will be making of. Making as a journeyman. Right. There's, uh, although Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, they have two different scales. It's one of the only locals in the United States that actually does that. Uh-huh. But anyways, so it's like a, uh, if I were to work in Cedar Rapids as a journeyman, I'll make roughly $26 an hour. And that's the minimum as a journeyman. Mm-hmm. I can become a foreman or a project manager or get into the shop and do like uh, planning and bids and stuff like that. And like there is... This is opening a door for a literally a warehouse of opportunity. Seriously. And so what um where do you sort of see you yourself taking this? I mean, are you going all the way? You know, do you want to become a master? Do you want to start your own firm? Do you want so, to um take over you for can, your dad? You essentially know? you can test you take your journeyman's test. So you'd be a journeyman wireman. Or and then um, once you receive that, there's just a you need uh, more job hours and a couple other things. Then you can take your master electrician's license. Really doesn't do very much for you, honestly. Besides, give you the opportunity to start a shop. You know, mm-hmm. become your own contractor, which you have to get to jump through a few other hoops and get some other licenses. Yeah. But uh, at least every shop needs to have one master electrician on staff. You know, one one hired. Where is your brother at in the process? He's a third year apprentice, and I'm okay. a first year apprentice. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And so it takes how long to become a journeyman? It takes five five years in the apprenticeship program. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Besides that, um, uh, what you're doing in the future? Yes, I I didn't answer that. Um. um so uh, you can kind of think of the union as like a temp agency. Mm-hmm. So Tri City Electric, who I work for right now, they'll they'll call the call the hall. The, lo- the union hall and mm-hmm. say I need uh, four journeymen and a few apprentices. So they'll sit, they'll they'll call up four journeymen who are on the books waiting for a job opportunity. You know, and say, hey, would you like to go and work for Tri City Electric? Here's a start time. Here's a location, and here's the pay. And you say yes or no. Gotcha. Yeah, and then uh, I guess the proper uh, way to go through that is you work for that company until they lay you off, mm-hmm. and then you go back on the books and wait for an opportunity. But uh, where I would like to see myself in this is, um, I guess, just do things by the book. Okay. Because there, there's uh, playing the the contractor side and the union side. There's you, you got to find a way to ba- equally balance the politics of it. Because there's okay. being a shoppy for the contractor. Yeah. Be, it's, mo- yeah. I'm sure there's a lot that goes with it. Yeah, it's a world that I really don't know that much about. Yep, there's a union contractor agreement on like the type of tools uh, journeymen are required to provide versus mm-hmm. what the shop provides and what the shop does for you, really? what you need to bring and what they provide for you. 
a bunch of rules. Some of those tools can get pretty expensive, so I imagine that's it's kind of a it's, big deal. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, at least the basic set of like what you need to complete the mm-hmm. job isn't. It's not. I guess I couldn't put a price tag on it because it's, I, it's personal preference of the quality of tool you want to you want to provide yourself with. Yeah. You know, like a pair of uh, lines lineman's pliers brand and the tool name itself. Yeah. That can cost like fifty two dollars is what I saw on Amazon when I was looking at some. Wow. Yeah. But that tool will last you your entire lifetime. You know, if you wear that out, you're doing something stupid with it. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, my only real experience with blue collar work is, um, if you remember, I was telling you about I worked for that asbestos abatement yeah. company, uh-huh. and so I kind of got to see what that was like. I didn't do a lot of the asbestos work. I was more of a delivery boy, mm-hmm. um, so I would work in the shop and I would take <laughs> equipment out to the job sites. Delivery man. Delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the my favorite part of that job though was meeting the project managers at the sites. Oh, there are some funny, They funny were dudes. the most, I don't even know how to describe them. Their personalities were just awesome. Well, this is one thing that gets neglected by the contractors and the brotherhood is the project manager is essentially the middleman of the whole operation, you know? Like, he's got to appease the contractors and appease all the journeymen. So, like, he's dealing with guys calling in, like not going to be there then and thus in turn projects aren't going to be done on time the acquired amount Mm -hmm. of work for that project isn't going to be completed so finding that balancing act and trying to appease both sides it's a very stressful thing even at our own job site our project manager from when i started to where he is now i have like (laughs) his hair is grayed Really? Like, tremendously. I cannot imagine oh, yeah. the stress he is under. Cool. And then he still manages to keep a, a chipper attitude. He's if you know, if you're a decent worker and you know you're not a screw up, mm. he's incredibly, incredibly nice to you and very helpful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I remember those project managers. They they were uh some of them were hard asses, but oh, they were yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And, they're like um, drill sergeants in a sense, they, you know, they're motivators. Yeah. So, and one guy in particular, uh, I think I told you about him. He was the one that was, I barely knew this guy, and he wanted to talk about conspiracy theories with me. Oh, yeah, the trade is. We were talking about full of them. Uh, the, uh, what, what the hell are they called? The theory that, like, there was a extraterrestrial race that was on Earth. The Anunnaki? Yeah, the ant, the <laughs> ant people, right? Are they ants or? There's a couple of theories, I guess, a couple of conspiracies out there. There's like uh, drawings in like Egyptian caves of yeah. like ant looking people. Yeah, what they think preceded humanity. Yeah, do you know anything about that? I do not know. I don't know much about that one. Wait, wait, this... wait, wait, wait. Did you say preceded the human race? That's that's what. Preceded. Preceded. So it came before? Yes. Yes. Allegedly. So, so, so yeah. wait. Allegedly. So, like. In what the science scientists would say, the evolution, like, scale. They were just they were just the sentient species before humanity is what mm-hmm. what okay. they think of, not okay. like what became us. You know, right? Oh, so okay. somebody, I was like, yeah. all right, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't well, know too many on the specifics of it. While we're on the topic of conspiracies, which I know is a, a favorite topic of yours, oh, yeah. I I made something for you out of my. Uh, chipotle tinfoil wrapper that oh, I ate, my word. um you did not is it a hat like an hour ago Ooh. this is your this very is why, own this is why you went to chipotle this is your own. very own tinfoil hat oh it is not my first tinfoil hat <laughs> i'll be honest can i can i get an explanation of why that's not your first tinfoil hat most people me, have never worn a tinfoil hat <laughs> me and my dad and my brother are pretty uh enthralled in the conspiracy world i guess um some of them, like, they're some of the facts that they provide, some of them are outrageous and, like, egregious and they're ridiculous. Fun, but, but they're fun to read. Oh, yeah, definitely. But then there's some of them that, like, really catch you off guard and the facts are well-sourced, well-put-together and put in a way that it's just, like... And they're hard to ignore. What? So, what? for you, what do you think is the biggest conspiracy theory that you believe in that isn't, like, super wild, but it's, you know, maybe believable? I definitely think it's super wild, but I firmly believe that, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I firmly believe that 
society like it is all a farce you know like we're not we're free to an extent but we're not free to the capacity of what we envision ourselves as americans you know like i think there's some sort of oligarchical society that really controls the way things work and what really plays out and there's a small group of people who are trying to sub subsert what's the word trying trying to expose all this sort of corruption and then this oligarchical group you know pulls some strings and diverts your attention over here like that whole epstein thing uh-huh this motherfucker literally like was about to rat on the clintons and like had like documents evidence all this oh, stuff yeah. and he's Man, fucking he's, next thing dead yeah there's reports of him screaming and like yelling not like stop no, there's wait okay so the funniest tweet i saw about that i think it was from ben shapiro he said like everybody who he's like yesterday everybody who thought that uh conspiracy theories were garbage everybody's a conspiracy theorist oh, now yeah like no, the fucking grab clintons. your tinfoil hats people <laughs> like <laughs> the clintons or somebody schwacked him dude he got schwacked no it... i don't think it was suicide you know and then you know next thing bam mass shooting you know like yeah oh divert oh. your attention over here speaking of mass shootings i want to know and i think everyone wants to know what the hell happened in las vegas yes no one talks about it anymore yes. Nope, that is another thing that got just swept under the wayside. That was huge, too. It was, that was a, not yeah. a small shooting. No. The conspiracy theory, I read about it. I don't know how to feel about it. I really honestly don't have a formed opinion on it. I don't feel like it was cited enough to be credible. But uh, um, the, I, I'd have to find the link and send it to you guys so you at least have Give some sort of Give me the premise credit. of it. Basically, the premise of it is that uh, there was this oil prince king from, like, the Middle East that was there. And it was there were, it was all just a uh, charade to try and get him to come out so they could, you know, schwack him. But really? uh, it was kind of a fail. But even if, if you listen to the audio of the shooting, and if you've even spent a small amount of time around a freaking... 249 saw it sounds identical oh yeah the rate of fire no in the it was the a machine gun yeah it was definitely legit People it was thought... not a bump stock or whatever they yeah. think it was no there's no way it sounded like a crew serve weapon yeah and even in a tactical sense like once they raided his room and he's got like 20 some rifles lined up fully loaded and he apparently only used one rifle the like... wild thing though is that this guy had no background yeah, no background no, history, no reason that no was history no yeah nothing was it, he a fall guy i think he was a patsy for it really yeah god i want to know i do too i but... swear that they had to have covered that up because if you notice the media really really picks and choose chooses no which shootings it's, they talk about it's so hard to find a viable uh a credible source of media no matter where you look, you know, like everyone has their own personal agenda, their own way they want to see things played out. So they'll twist the narrative into whatever perspective they want the outcome to be. You know, even it's even for people who are trying to be truthful about it, it's it's almost subconscious. Yeah. Humanity is not innately good. We are innately evil. I'm a perfect example of that. We were just talking about uh, the erratic things I do just on a whim. Well, that's what the Bible says. The Bible yeah. says we come into the world sinners. Definitely. I, I, I'm i not a religious man, but I can agree with that statement. I think that's a common uh, idea among lots of religions, mm -hmm. too. I so. think uh, it, humanity likes to see chaos. You know? there's it, Oddly enough, I agree. Even Even if you are a... You know, somebody who's entranced in their own, like, personal, uh, god damn, routine. And, um, some, like, that frustration you get when you get out of the routine, but it's sort of, uh, spices up life, you know? People crave excitement and, yeah. and adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I remember back when, um, uh, the, the, uh, 2016 election was happening yes. and the Trump and Hillary and all those debates were going on, the Republican debates. 
and there was a lot of people saying like the debates are just a sideshow now it's just a yelling match it's just a gotcha match it's yeah. not about the facts anymore and there's all these people that i saw complaining about it and i'm like dude that's not what the people want yeah. the reason why the debates are a sideshow are like a they're a spectacle is because people want to see the candidates go at each other yeah people want action and, entertainment uh, bread and circus just like the romans and that's why i also think not to change the subject but the nfl's days might be numbered because the nfl is taking the one thing that it has going for it and it is tom brady getting rid of it no not okay. tom brady okay. i'm talking about the physicality okay, Taylor oh. Humphrey. whoa I'm not a football guy, so what do you mean in this? The physicality are they? It's going oh, down, man. A lot, a lot of like not as much contact. Getting, there's more rules about a lot of stricter rules. So dude, like guys are roughing getting, the roughing yeah. the passer. You can't barely touch the QB anymore. That's without... because society has become so pussified, right, man. But people, you have one crowd that says, "Well, we we want we want this. We want safety. That's... We want this. We want uh, you know less injuries. We want less people." getting that's, brain damages but which then, of course everyone does right yeah but there's that subconscious but part that doesn't away, really want that. no you can't take away the fundamental of the game Reg or, like you see that as a big problem into like sequels in movies or video games or any, any sort of franchise that has like uh cemented their initial fan base um they they always try and it's always a money grab, you know? Like, they're trying to get that next generation uh -huh. hooked on it, I guess. So they change the game a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but, but then it detracts from all of the initial initial fans on why they loved it and why they got into and they the video to game, the series. Disenfranchised the, yeah. by it. Yeah. Totally agree. Or they become mainstream and they p politicalize and sell out and they're not what they used to be. They're not core to their message, you know? I definitely agree with that, though. I mm -hmm. think that people crave chaos. That's such a good way of putting it. Yeah. And it's they they don't. I don't think people crave chaos on the outside, on the surface. No, I think it's, it's subconscious. subconscious. Yeah. Be I think because it, it's got to release some sort of like dopamine or chemical within your brain. I think existence is purely just a search for ecstasy. You know, so that sort of chemical reaction. Yeah, that's why I, I guess that in a whole sense is why I struggle to believe in God or any sort of omnipotent being is like we are all just searching for meaning in life and like finding a purpose or that next adrenaline rush, that next source of dopamine, that next uh, shock value or uh -huh. I don't know. Do you consider yeah. yourself an atheist or are you more agnostic? I'd say agnostic only I think because of the way that we see things, I think of ourselves as the universe trying to experience itself, you know? What what are we made of? We're made up of stardust, atoms, all this stuff that was been around for billions of billions of billions of years and existing, only now compounding and forming into a uh, sentient being who's almost cursed with that, that gift of sen sentience, you know? Uh huh. And now... Well, I think it's interesting you call it a curse of sentience because that's essentially the story of the Garden of Eden. Oh, yeah. No, I think I think religious scripture has a lot of good points. I'm not discrediting it, I guess. Are you familiar with Jordan Peterson? Vaguely. So he talks a lot about sort of the Bible and biblical yes, stories yeah. as sort of a manifestation of human knowledge yeah, of what we've I, learned. I just think they didn't have a way to... to um scientifically explain it right so this is sort of where i differ from i would say like my parents who are traditional yes. christians my mom probably believes I, I i shouldn't put words in her mouth but she someone like her might believe that the garden of eden was a real place adam and eve were real people maybe they were maybe yeah. they weren't but she firmly believes that whereas i'm not so much concerned if they were real it's about the story the, the moral that they're trying to it's make. about the yeah. story and the story is that God created two perfect people, and when they allowed uh, the snake, right, to to tempt them, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> when they allowed, oh Satan, oh <laughs> Satan, to tempt them, they became so they ate from the tree 
of knowledge of good and evil. That part's really important because yeah. at that point in time, they had only knowledge of good, mm -hmm. right? And once they ate the fruit or whatever it was, it's just a story, they suddenly became aware of evil, which I kind of interpret that as they became sentient. Yeah. They became self-aware yeah. because at that point, the Bible says that they were aware that they were naked. At that point, they didn't care. Yeah. They had no knowledge of anything bad. They could not do harm. But now that they ate that, they could. And because of that, they became imperfect. And so I think that story, whether it was real or not, is just a manifestation yeah. of a truth that and, we yeah. as humans have figured out. In any capacity, what, what it is trying to get across is valid. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think that, you know, this is a whole other topic, but that's yeah. where I think Christians need to they need to sort of adopt a new method of reeling people in because they're losing people. Yeah. Straight up. Well, America is losing Christians. And I think it's because they're, they're not adapting. They're not adapting to yeah. the times. And I don't want them to change their core philosophy, but you're not going to get this new generation of people to come to church yeah. and become Christian by making them believe in old tales. Well, you know? you're not... What I think a lot of organized religion does nowadays is try and, like, make somebody feel not so, I don't know how I want to word it, not, not feel, uh, god damn it, I had it so put Maybe, like, being head. guilty for being the way that they are? Yeah, and, um, I, uh, I guess, like, you get in, like, my experience in churches is you get a lot of fake people who are only oh, in yeah. it for the honor points, you know? For sure. Yeah, like, Dude, I grew up in a church then, like that. And then they go and contradict everything they claim to believe in, mm -hmm. what they post on social media, directly contradicts with what they post the next day. I used to really think that way, and I still kind of do. But also, yeah, I also have kind of remembered, well, the people that are really vocal on social media and sometimes in the church that are like that, where they're very fake, they're very... Uh, in it for the publicity, you know? Look, what is it look how godly I am. What is it? Uh, the idiots are always the loudest? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really not the whole church. Most people that are going to church are your everyday folks. Yeah, you know? but they're not the ones speaking up right. because they understand the... the um, God, there's a word for it. Uh, I think they understand... The... Oh, God damn it. They it's, get it. I guess they just get it. They, uh, there's a word for it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait until I get that word. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, not holy. It's like, it's like holy, and it's like spiritual. Not, it's like spiritual. The, um, uh, the sacred, the sacredness of it. You know, uh, like, um, they understand why it's important, and they mm -hmm. know not to impede on somebody else's understanding of their faith and their yep. belief. I, that's why I. But it's it's when you get to those people like, oh, you don't believe in God or like. Well, I, the people that I have an, an I wouldn't say an issue with, but that I I don't like what they're doing is the people that are just act like they're angels on social media and they post these videos about you know scriptures and how that you should be feeling this way, you should be thinking like this, and I'm like. You're 20 years old. Yeah. What the hell do you know about the world? You know, it's and then like you catch him in a mini skirt on the streets in Iowa City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm not, I'm not obviously, you know, talking about Bible scriptures on the internet is not the worst thing that you could be no, doing. So well, I don't want to get too upset about yeah. that. Like it's not that big of a deal. But I think as far as like you're an you're an ambassador to the church, you're an ambassador to Christianity, and you're. <laughs> You're taking people, regular folks, and you're repelling them with your message. Yeah. Because not, nobody wants to be a part of that. Where yes. nobody wants to hang out with a bunch of twenty year olds that think they know everything. And we don't. I don't know shit. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think that as a Christian, my attitude is more just, uh, you know, I don't have anything figured out. I'm just. Yeah. It's just about faith. It's about yeah. trust. That's some people. What, in my opinion, um. This might be rude to a lot of people, so I apologize in advance. But this is my <laughs> this is my personal belief. Go right ahead. Um, some people who uh have faith in religion, it maybe it's because they haven't been in a situation where they their only reliance was to have faith in themselves. Mm -hmm. I that's 
that's one of the things. Another one of the reasons I do not believe in God is I have a lot of faith in myself and that I will mm-hmm. figure out a solution, figure out a way through right. whatever my problems are. I think you're talking about people that sort of have this faith in God that they think God's just going to take care of them. And yeah, so that, yeah. You know, and, and then, they don't worry. Yeah, but I have that in myself. <laughs> I see, I, I would interpret that as I think God wants me to have faith in myself. Yes, yes. And I think through having faith in myself, I have faith in him. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I, th- I just, I, I see I just skip way. out on the middleman. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to... No, go ahead. No, this is all personal opinion. Skyler's Skyler's got some really good insights. I could talk about this for like four hours, so I don't want to like keep it going forever. But I'm just curious. So for me, my biggest, um, let's say like anchors in why I do believe in God is the looking into genetics and how everything kind of became, how everything works. Like genetics is like, that's ground level stuff. Like yes. you You can make anything. If you knew enough about it, you could make anything you wanted. Yeah. It's um, code. And so how that became and then what happens when you die? What I just I'm curious of what your your kind of thoughts My are. My belief? On it. Just because like I get the believing in yourself thing and I kinda agree with Davis, like mm-hmm. you you have the faith in God and he kinda gives you your faith in yourself I almost think, type of thing. Yeah. A better way to explain it would be that I trust that God has equipped me with the tools yes, yes, yeah. exactly. to do exactly. what yes. he wants exactly. me to do. So I, I, and I kind of agree with that. It's just, I mean, I'm just curious about those. What, of, what I think of afterlife, what, I guess. What happened? What what, how, how, how did things come? How did, how did we become from whatever? Yeah. How like, did we become what we are? How did we become we what we exist? are? And how did, what, uh, what happens, happens after? after? What happens afterwards? Okay, so part one of that: How did we become what we are? There's, there's no way to prove, you know, e- no, either, no, yeah, either yeah, opinion, either, no matter, either yeah. Yep, 100% um, agree. in my opinion, I, I, I guess I never really thought about that. I don't have a formed. Honestly, I think that saying opinion. "I don't know" is a perfectly fair I th- no, answer. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm not I expect you to have like the answer. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah, no, I, I got the answer. Right. That's why I like. <laughs> but my parents are are probably. Um, I hate to keep throwing them under the bus. But, <laughs> yeah, but they uh, a lot of Christians might uh, initially reject evolution. I remember when they started teaching evolution more in schools that there was a big backlash, and I don't understand that because. That's an awfully bold statement to say that you know for a fact how the world began. And it's like, you know, I think that saying I don't know is perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah, So I actually like. I do have a formed opinion, though, on the afterlife. You do want to hear that. Go for it. Do that first. Then I'll go on my little tangent. All right. (laughs) So like I was talking about earlier, earlier uh, about sentience. Being self-aware, I think that also commingles with consciousness. You know, like sentience and con- consciousness are, are essentially the same. You know, yeah. uh, but like a dog is conscious, but right. they're not sentient. You know, they, they uh-huh. they're it's a, a higher capacity. They don't of, really think for themselves. Yes, they do, but, but not like we do. People have dreams, and they'll claim to have gone to the afterlife, speaking to dead relatives, or to have. Um, there's a maybe you know, like when you dream and you travel. In your dreams, like guess, you, yeah. you uh, astral projection that's the term. I've never heard that term, but okay. But, anyways, maybe Skylar can look at like that. uh, you're asleep in your know, bed, but you feel as if your consciousness and your soul has left your body and you can and go and view anywhere on the planet. So, you think that maybe after death, that I think your energy still exists in, in this universe on the same plane of existence, but you're consciousness is ascended to a higher level which essentially is it could be equated to you know the evangelical christian view of heaven right you know? so which we we would view it as you have a soul yeah that is detached from your actual body exactly your soul is your identity of mm-hmm. who you are and when your body Just, dies your soul goes to live in mm-hmm. eternal whatever but it it equates to some basic laws of physics, you know, like energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred in form. Mm-hmm. You you produce this energy, an electrical brain, like yeah. your brain produces electrical current. Well, I think what's fascinating about the Bible, and I kind of already hit on this, is that it's 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 stories that are created 
based on truths that we've sort of figured out, mm -hmm. right? For example, I mentioned the snake in the garden. Yes. Some people theorize that the reason why they picked that having it be a snake was deliberate. Yes. Because at the time, right, snakes were... I love were, calling people snakes, by the way. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> snakes were, for the people living in, I mean, I don't know, Egypt and the Middle East and that region, snakes were a real pain in the ass, right? Snakes were a, a, a daily problem, yeah. I guess, according to whoever I was listening to, probably Jordan Peterson. But uh, so it makes sense that they used the snake as the villain of the story. Yes. And you'll also see there's a, like a famous, I don't know if it's a mural or a painting of the Virgin Mary holding the newborn Jesus. Yeah. And she has her foot on a snake on the ground. So she's I guess, keeping I've never him, seen that. She's keeping him away from the snake. Yeah. And so how I wonder if that's true. If that's true, how many times in the Bible are there old stories, old fables that are just sort of manifestations of like a, wisdom that we've acquired? Like a wives' tales so, yeah. or you, children's And what stories. does that mean for us if do you uh, believe like what do you think? on the stories of like when Jesus was on earth, like do you think those are like fables? Cause there's like actual, sure. Yeah. People have like, I think no, Jesus was a real person. Cause, no. Cause there's like, there's a hundred percent proof. Like atheists yeah. can't even deny that Jesus was a real person. Oh, yeah. And no, I don't deny that with like the Israelites escaping Egypt and the Egyptians running after them. And mm -hmm. then the, the way the, the God held up the wave of the river and stuff and it crashed on the Egyptians. Uh -huh. Like they found Egyptian, like, old wheels and stuff off whatever they're called and just here's, stuff like that here's what i'll say to that as far as all of the uh supernatural things that jesus supposedly did i don't know if they're <laughs> true because i like i i guess by faith i believe that it happened yes but I what i was talking about kind of with the other uh stories that i mentioned they are sometimes myths religious myths are explanations for things that we don't understand. So for I took a mythology class in high school. I had an English teacher who was yes. a fanatic about mythology. And he sort of explained that like, for example, the the Greeks didn't understand how emotion yeah. worked. That they whole didn't Greek know pantheon where, is literally right. based on explain every god is an explanation and right. an expletive of, of something some sort of emotion that they don't get. or and yeah. uh so they didn't understand what they knew that emotions had power over us, mm -hmm. but they didn't understand where it came from. So, for example, uh, anger is a is a force that has power over you. I, yes. I mean, think yeah. about it. When you've been angry, are you really at the top of your decision making game? No. So there is something going on that has power over you. And they interpreted that as a god. They didn't know how else to. So they called it Ares, the god of war and anger and whatever. And just repeat that process for all the other gods and uh, false. <laughs> What's that? I I'm just fucking with you. I took yeah. a what, classical what mythology Aries, class. He's, they have a god of He's, anger. Uh, I don't. That's like a minor god. I took a classical mythology class in college. <laughs> Anyways, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ares is the uh, manifestation of bloodlust and massacre. Okay. Not even the god of war. He's just the god of well. I know that slaughter. I, god I, of the slaughter. Right. I was just using him as, I, know, that, I'm I just, guess, as an example. I, I'm just, I'm but just you understand what I'm dick. saying here. Yeah. I so, wanna, oh, are you done or not? I'm I was just going to relate this back to <laughs> the story of Jesus. I wonder then if this, if the case is true, if it's the same for the stories of Christ, like if what he did actually has some sort of real value, yeah, has some real like stuff that we should pay attention to but maybe didn't go down quite exactly how it was written because the people at the time didn't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. So just like the Greeks didn't know how to explain emotion, which, by the way, we still don't understand yeah, emotion. Yeah, we struggle. Even communicating to like some sort of uh, spouse or significant other or even a friend, it is mm -hmm. it was one of the most difficult things that we encounter in our existence is explaining our, our, our feelings and emotions. Yeah. We, we learned about uh, theories of emotion in uh, my elementary psychology class mm -hmm. with uh, Professor Hazeltine. If you ever get the chance to take a class with that guy, I highly recommend it. He's awesome. But, I mean, we have theories of emotion, but none of them are really concrete. So yeah. 
that's kind that's of another, a crazy it, thing. It's a theory. It's not a science. That's, yeah, that's what's beautiful. Is nobody like, really knows. So you can laugh at the Greeks yeah. for making up stories about gods, but it's yeah, how they I coped like, with it. It's how they not like we have a better explanation. When, yeah, when you were talking about like the Greeks, like I had the same kind of thought process of like, well, even back to the Catholic Church, everyone thought the Earth was flat, right? And once it turned out that oh, someone discovered the Earth's not flat, then the Catholic Church still pushed back on it. Because there's there are verses in the Bible that say like from the east to the west and stuff like that that make it and like the four corners of the earth that's uh-huh. used in the Bible somewhere too. Yeah. So and I so think... it's like oh look at the Bible says that and so they they like push back on it mm-hmm. and like for me I don't have like a once I have a strong side of for the evolution. Are you coming it, out as a flat earther right now? No. <laughs> 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 oh no! Please no. <laughs> If you guys are a flat earther, please turn the, the earth pod- is round. Please, if please you think pod- otherwise, turn the fuck podcast off. off. If you're a flat earther, you guys, I want you to be listening. Did you guys see that video of the flat earthers conducting an experiment and they prove themselves wrong? Yes, <laughs> they, they've done it like three times. They're like, now. wait, that can't be right. <laughs> and they like change oh. their opinion. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, um, with like evolution stuff, I, I, I go back and forth, kind of like, well, what if evolution, since it's kind of been like proven or whatever you want to call it theorized in the last a lot of advancements in the it's last a theory that makes a lot of in the, sense in the last last whatever 50 years there's been a lot of like genetics coming through and everything that kind of strengthened the theory a lot and so is that the thing that the church nowadays like in the future we're gonna look back at it and be like wow i can't believe you believe that just like we kind of look back at the catholic church and be like how the heck did you ever believe the earth was flat like uh-huh. that's the dumbest thing i've ever well, heard yeah i think it was uh um, was it Galileo that discovered some? What did he? He do? discovered that we weren't the center of our solar system. Yeah, the Earth, the Earth did not. And the Catholic Church rejected that idea. Yeah, that we revolved well, around the sun, not the, the point, sun. Revolved the point around of us. me saying that was just like your your the Catholic Church and the Church in general kind of used God to fill in the gaps. God, uh, like there's a theory of the yep. God, the God of the gaps. Like you, mm-hmm. you put God where. You what's, can't explain things. What's beautiful about that is like that has been like accepted scientific fact since what the 1400s. It, it, like on mass, no, uh, that we're not the center of the. the oh, solar oh yeah, the, how, whenever how, Galileo how the sun, decided, how the yeah. sun, we rotate around yeah. the sun. That's, that's and we a human could not physically prove that until the 1950s. You know, like that's wild, literally hundreds of years, something that we knew was a fact, but nobody has ever physically seen it and been able to yeah that's right <laughs> it's kind of seen it. it's kind of like we were before we started recording we were talking about nikola tesla oh and how God. that man oh. discovered things that we wouldn't he understand for decades and decades i exist solely to even slightly in, in any sort of way my existence is centered around trying to be like Nikola be Tesla. Like his, <laughs> at least honor him and his existence <laughs> as the smartest human being God, ever. He's, ever in he's a fascinating person to study. He created AC AC current, which is <laughs> powers the world. Essentially, yeah. Well, yes, Without he, it, DC would be king. And he created he radar a DC generator and with sonar, the, radar, he, sonar, X ray. Yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk is that to me today. Like of nowadays, Elon Musk is the, Musk. the. I think he is the Nikola Tesla of today. I don't know that I don't he think he's is in the cap- Nikola. No, I don't think no, he's no, in the no. I'm not saying. I'm not saying he's like had the discoveries or anything of no the, of of whatever you want to call it. How big the discoveries are. Yeah. But like, I think it was Taylor who told me a while ago. He described it as the Earth. Our Earth is Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft world. <laughs> and I thought that was the. Perfect description, because yes, he's digging tunnels underneath Las Vegas to make some roads. Oh, that Joe he's, Rogan podcast oh, was amazing. Yes, he's highly, like highly recommend. He's like, so you're digging tunnels underneath Los Angeles, and um, do you need like permission for you that? Need, yeah, How you do need, you like get... a license? He's or... like, no, not really. You just start just... digging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> just, like you didn't? You didn't? You like who do you have to talk to? Uh, I mean, not really anyone. You just kind of start digging. Like, I was just, yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, that man's wow. crazy. You well, get me going on Tesla for a while. Oh, yeah. Well, we could have a lot. Of, we could have a three hour conversation. Matt, I think I could have a podcast with you all night. We could have, we could just have a podcast, a separate podcast of just Matt. And yeah. then we have the rest of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
Yeah. Although I may be scattered sometimes in my thought, it's it's there. You articulate yourself pretty well. I no, try to. We'll say. I'm yeah, no Kempamaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a tailor. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't wait till they hear this. Oh, Gap neither. tooth ridge. Oh, oh it's <laughs> well. It's been a very good episode. Actually. We'll have to get you and Mikey on again. Yeah. I want to get uh, Mikey down here. Shamey couldn't come down. He's you know doing the schooling thing and mm-hmm. said he had a lot of shit That's he had his, to take care of. Matt's brother for you yes. Know, he's know. hilarious. He's I don't one even of, know if I've met the guy. He's one of the. I don't think, yeah. He's one of the most laid back, but yet funny people I've ever met yeah. in my Is life. Is he older or younger than? He's twenty eight. Okay. Yes. So, and older you guys are me. you guys are half brothers. Yeah, we have the same mom, but uh, my father essentially raised him too. And okay, you've you've told me about this before, but could you explain that one more time? How sort of Mikey fits into your life growing up? Uh, my mom's first marriage with my older brothers dad they got divorced when my brother was pretty young i don't know i wasn't born yet so i don't know the specifics even though i've you know could have asked that as an easy question to my parents right but anyways um my father raised him as a you know an infant child pretty much all the way till he was would be like 10 ish i think he was at least in his life for quite quite a while and then uh when my parents got divorced when i was three uh, my mom got custody of my brother because my mom was his primary caregiver and my dad had no legal rights to him. Mm-hmm. And I got to stay with my dad. But um, about my senior year of high school, um, me and my brother got to, I guess, rekindle our, our brotherhood. Uh-huh. He, um, Him and my dad have always kind of stayed in touch, but they really started to flourish again when my brother got out of high school. Yeah. And... Um, he decided to start the trade and and started uh, lived with um, at my dad's place for a couple months or so, and that's how him and I got to get back into you guys got like really actually close being again. yeah actually being siblings you know like yeah. I I saw him maybe once a year at the most, yeah. and now <laughs> him and I live together in our own place. That that must have been awesome. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it is one of the greatest roommate experiences I've ever had. Yeah. That like being with Mitch. And then being with my brother, both incredible. Mm-hmm. Well, I definitely miss having you down here. Yeah, hundred percent. He I, makes I, life more interesting. Hundred percent. Right? <laughs> I guess I just got a different insight that you guys don't get to see being in the trade and yeah. No, it's good being that in the infantry. It, it's good to see that you're driven. I know now. what it's like. I don't know what it's like to be a pug. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you do know what it's like to be a leg, though. I do. <laughs> But yeah, there's never a dull moment with Matt Aller. I guess. So, <laughs> anyway, Skyler, how are we on time? Uh, depending on how much we cut out at the beginning, <laughs> a little over an hour. All right. Well, I guess we can wrap it up. I'm starting to get hot as shit. Is there in this room. there any controversial thing that I can say to to end <laughs> uh, this well, shock value? I did want to talk about um one of our first experiences together. Which one? There's Mystic Lake Casino. Ooh. Oh my goodness! Ooh. Davis had to get the story. Oh. Davis has to get the story on the podcast. That, <laughs> so that is I, a I'm podcast gonna, in its own. I'm gonna save the story about the save that, the state trooper for another time. Okay. But I want to talk about how Matt fits into this equation. Okay, yeah. I haven't so heard this idea. Matt, uh, Matt, and I sort of bonded on the drive. Well, so him and Taylor enlisted into the National Guard, and to celebrate that, um, we went up to Mystic Lake Casino and. They took me along. This was like a couple weeks into school. Mm-hmm. They took me along because... As I'm, our native guide. I'm from the Twin <laughs> Cities. I've been to Mystic Lake <laughs> tons of times. The idea being that Minnesota casinos are... Uh, you can get in if you're 18. Yeah. So, anyway. They took me with because I had been there before. And I could show them around the cities. And uh, so, me and Matt sort of bonded in the car ride up over our love of old music. Yes. Uh-huh. And um, that really sold me on you, to be honest. <laughs> if you would have been in like some sort of gangster trap music, Cardi B, yeah, hardcore. I don't, fan. I don't think I'd be <laughs> sitting you, here right now. Did you, you didn't drive, did you? I drove later in the night, I didn't drive on the long, right the long on home. the way up yeah. because Ray made his jungle juice, yes, Uncle Ray's Missouri special. Yeah, we had a name were, for it at one point, it was something like it was, that. It was, that was close. <laughs> Yeah, Ray made a whole tub of jungle juice. We filled uh, all those bottles like up. Like literally 20 gallons 
of liquor. It was so <laughs> much. And there's a whole story with that that involves the Minnesota uh, State Patrol. No one, but, went, no one went to jail. No one got minors. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily. But are you saying how? <laughs> no. So we get to the casino and Matt's having a freaking day. Oh, yeah. Okay? I had a like pull and a money? half. Yes. He probably, what'd you make? Like $200? I walked in with $5 and came out with 350 bucks. <laughs> Dude, he <laughs> killed it. Okay. What'd All you right. play? What'd you play? Just blackjack. Just 21, dude. Oh, yep. my word. So there was like 10 of us and some of us wanted to go downtown. The other guys that had girlfriends, they decided to call it a night, and they had their own little adventure. Yeah, that's the that, uh, <laughs> that is a whole other story. They got the short straw. The five of us that were single, free men, we went up to Minneapolis, and um, we parked up there, started walking around, and I think it was Mitchell who wanted to go to the titty bar. Yep. And so all of us drunk at you know two in the morning were minus like, me, the DD. Right. Just- we don't drink and drive here. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he was DDing. So we're walking around. We go to this uh, adult establishment, mm-hmm. and um, Matt blew all three hundred fifty dollars that he made. No, no, no. <laughs> three, three hundred. It was three hundred twenty-five. It oh, doesn't make yeah. it any better because I, because I, <laughs> well, I, I, I saved enough money to like pay for the trip. It was like what? Well, I guess it would have been like three hundred bucks that I spent because it was fifty bucks for the trip. Is what we figured yeah. out. Yeah, so I, I literally came months. out even. Yes. Yeah. So Matt uh, yeah. came into the trip, uh, came into Mystic with $5. At one point was at 350 and at the end of the trip, he netted $20. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're sitting down at the strip club, and uh, we're just, you know, a bunch of freaking idiots. The farthest thing freshmen. from adults in the Yeah, that's yeah. why I probably that's thought we were so cool. We were like, oh my God, we're at the strip club. Oh my God. God. And all of a sudden, I'm like, where the hell's Matt? And Mitchell is like, just destroyed. <laughs> fucking, yeah. He's got his fucking sunglasses <laughs> on. Inside of sitting in a, a poorly sitting lit back in his strip chair. Club. Okay. Like, he's just the coolest cat ever. He is the and coolest. And I'm like, cat dude, where, where'd Matt go? And uh, I'm looking around, and all of a sudden, I see Matt going up a staircase with a stripper. <laughs> He's gone. Like, just goodbye. How much does that run you? <laughs> there goes my political career because somebody will pull this up 30 years oh, from man. now. And... Whoops. Uh, Statue of limitations. Hey, that's all right. You know what? We don't censor on this podcast. No, I agree. First Amendment. You don't like it? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I am who I am. Write us an angry, I mean, angry yeah, write, letter. Write me an angry email. I actually want to read it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. No, please don't. But. I say do it. <laughs> Yeah, so I just I wanted to get that story in. That was a least. good time. Yeah, it was. That was a, I that was like three weeks into school. I still do not yeah. regret not going at all. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard a lot of stories. It was about a fifty-fifty. Like, what could have no, happened to you? I I probably would have had a good time. Well, but I would have looked back and been like, why why did I go? There was a fifty percent <laughs> chance that you blew a bunch of money at a strip club, and the other fifty percent was that you got pulled over by well, a Minnesota State Trooper at three in the morning with a felony amount of alcohol <laughs> yeah. in your vehicle. <laughs> Story for another time. Story for another time. We don't want to bore you guys. Anyway. Well, how about now, Sky? What do we have for uh, time? You're good. You, we can wrap it up. All right. Way. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that we'll be uh, discussing things till the end oh, of yeah. time. We'll have you on again. It's oh, been good. I'd uh, love to. One of my favorites. Right. This has actually been so. really fun and not nearly as stressful as I thought it would be. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's chill. We got a yeah. nice environment in here. Yeah, we mm-hmm. got the space tapestry. Yeah. We got a lava oh, lamp going. Yeah, yeah got it's a little just relaxing. Oak, li- oak, oak heart whiskey or rum mm-hmm. going in you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. Wow. Very anyway, smooth. Thank you all for listening. Um, And uh, I give you my good friend, Matthew Aller. Fly spread diseases, so keep yours closed. <laughs> That concludes our third episode. I hope you enjoyed our discussion. Matt and I could talk for hours about anything, so look for him to make a return to the podcast in the future. Uh, As always, you can find his Instagram handle in the description. Also, if you haven't already, find us on Instagram at Golden City Podcast. Skylar's been throwing together video clips for our episodes, and we'll be posting them up on there, so be sure to check those out. Thanks so much for listening. Cheers. Cheers.